Welcome to this care collab together with Galia's Orchids and the Orchid Saga. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for being here. This is going to be all about the Ascanopsis Irene Dobkin. Mine is named Elmhurst. Now here's what's going to happen in my care collab. First of all, you can see how tiny she is, but I need to get into that pot I want to bump her up into a pot for the next three years. She has been with Lekka and self-watering since she arrived in my collection in 2019. She was tiny. Back in the day, <laughs> she was labeled Asconopsis Irene Dobkin Elmhurst. Well, when this orchid arrived in my collection, I was a little bit astounded to say the least. So I went to the Google and immediately looked her up because she was not what I had ordered. Turns out that Asconopsis Irene Dobkin has two parents. Of course, we need two parents. One of them is Phalaenopsis Doris. She looks really, really pretty. She has the typical Phalaenopsis blooms because, you know, fal, but gorgeous coral color which is a little bit unusual because at least in my area i don't see many coral peach colored phalaenopsis so that's a very very pretty phalaenopsis but the other parent back in the day was labeled as ascocentrum miniata hmm okay ascocentrum miniata is now vanda miniata asconopsis yeah you see where i'm going here so not only did i not get a dendrobium helvigianum which i had ordered i know i know it's difficult you can see how they could have confused that completely similar plants dendrobium with this one yeah same structures everything looks similar and yes of course it doesn't i'm being facetious but let's just say Things have changed since then as well. Ascocentrums have now been reclassified as Vandas. So, <laughs> another name change alert. Even my Ascocentrum Ampuyathea is now Vanda Ampuyathea. So what do we call this orchid now? It is not an Ascanopsis anymore. Is it a Vandopsis? And the answer to that is no. It is called Vandaenopsis Irene Dobkin Elmhurst. What a mess. What a mess of names. What a rabbit hole of getting down to the real name of this orchid. Vandaenopsis Irene Dobkin. One thing though that I have noticed is that Phalaenopsis are clearly not very fast growers. They grow two leaves a year. They should grow two leaves a year. Let me qualify that. They should grow two leaves a year. That's not much. Vanda Miniata, I keep wanting to say Ascocentrum, Vanda Miniata is also a very, very slow grower. So you have a very slow grower in this orchid. And you can see that mine is by no means blooming size yet, but she's still alive. And there's two reasons I would have never bought myself an Irene Dobkin, ever. Because the cross makes no sense to me. The blooms look exactly like Phalaenopsis blooms with a hint of coral, beautiful spotting. Nothing against the blooms that I can see on the Google, but I didn't want another Phalaenopsis looking like orchid if I had wanted that. I would have bought her, so she is in my collection by mistake. Secondly, I would never have bought this one voluntarily because she is so slow. She is slower, at least from what I can gather, than a typical Phalaenopsis. Because while she also only grows two leaves per year, she also grows them very, very slowly and doesn't increase in size very, very quickly, which... <laughs> It's very frustrating. Well, I'm stuck with her now. I'm not very, very happy about it because the two details really don't do much for me. The slow growth <laughs> and we end up with Phalaenopsis blooms. And in the meantime, I got her while she was so small, as I mentioned earlier. She's been with me now three years and has not really done very, very much since then. Also, you can see at least I got me some roots. I have to make sure where that root tip is. But in the meantime, she had lost two of the lower leaves. And she has to at least, based on the leaf span, come to at least double the length of the leaves or even triple. So she's growing this leaf right now. And you can imagine how long that is going to take. Then she has to grow me another one. And then she stops growing for approximately eight months. And both parents being hot growers, it is always quite difficult to keep this orchid happy in the temperatures that she has to tolerate in my climate 
which can go as low as 14 degrees Celsius where she lives in the grow space, and then up to 40 degrees Celsius depending on whether the terrace door is open or not. So whether I'm ever going to see blooms on this orchid is... Uh, <laughs> anyone's guess but of course we're gonna try now she could have lived in this pot much much longer but i'm not happy with these little sort of makeshift pots you can see i have silicon in the bottom these already came with holes but back in the day my 15 centimeter pot here was far too big it would have just been a tiny bit ridiculous although the setup would have permitted it so yeah, the temperatures are not to her liking for many, many months of the year. And really this orchid, I know it sounds as though I'm really negative about it, but it's frustrating because I keep seeing an error in the shipment, which was supposed to be my dendrobium. So it's a constant reminder of, you know, you guys, you made a mistake. Now, the nursery as such left me with this orchid. They deducted the price. They refunded me the money. So I'm not complaining about that, but they didn't send me a Dendrobium helvigianum. And on top of that, they said, well, we sent you this one instead of the helvigianum because we didn't have the helvigianum anymore. And uh, as an orchid collector, I collect orchids. I don't collect what people think I like, especially not nurseries without informing me in advance if you had told me ahead of time i might have said yes but i would have said no in this case and now with all that yapping i've probably filled the pot up far too high yep but i'm recycling my big lacquer so that it can go at the base because what i'm going to do is fill up with smaller lacquer throughout the rest of the pot because i want this orchid to be in a water water retentive media so that she doesn't dry out on me, especially with my very, very low humidity. So what I've done here is basically just, you know, poured lecker in as you do in the past. She's taken to it pretty well. I don't see any new roots objecting. What objected was the old roots, but I do have a problem with the surface drying out and my root tips desiccating. And she is not a very happy root grower. So this is the root tip right here that I'm hoping to encourage to go into the media. That is why I'm choosing small lecker so that they don't have to fight so hard to find their way in. Let's get this filled up with water and we will do the gentle potting up method. Now, when it comes to light, she gets bright, bright shade. I do not expose her to any direct sunshine. She lives indoors all year round in my climate. And if it's very cloudy during the days during the winter, that's what you're getting. There is no supplemental light either. So bright shade. That's all I can offer this orchid. I think she's doing okay because I do see anthocyanin on the leaves. So it's not that bad. It's not like she's struggling with light levels. I can see that she is not bolting from her main growth. It's all growing quite nicely and tightly along the stem. That also signals to me that her fertilizer level are on point based on temperature, growing, etc. Which is 100 parts per million every time she finishes her reservoir. And then during the summer months, I've been supplementing once a month with calcium magnesium and seaweed. My calcium and magnesium are at 60 parts per million and my seaweed is at 40. Total of 100 parts per million once a month just to supplement a little bit more what my fertilizer has. So if any of these big lecker beads are floating to the top, they're coming out. I really want the roots to go in. That is looking really, really good. Pests, yes. I I'm lucky that I did not lose this leaf. I lost a leaf because of thrips. Back in the day, I thought it was moth larvae, but it wasn't. Turns out that was misdiagnosed. It was thrips. So this orchid was very, very close to declining permanently. And don't hate me. I wouldn't have exactly had a pity party if that had happened. But those thrips were taken care of once and for all without any sign of returning ever again 
by applying garlic alcohol. And since then, all her leaves have grown nice and clean. Now, previously, you may have seen my orchid was not staked, but this time I'm going to stake her because I intend to keep her in this setup, not just three years because she's such a reluctant root grower, but indefinitely. <laughs> This orchid is going to have to look like Medusa climbing out of her pot with aerial roots before I address her and repot her again. That is why I'm staking her because just like a Phalaenopsis, as she grows bigger, she will start to get a lean too. Last thing I want is to have to address this orchid again prematurely. And that is why a stake is going in just to start to contain her inside her pot because I am trying to think positively. She has got to come up to here before we can even think of blooms. So for the repotting prior, I did have her soaked in calcium, magnesium and seaweed, seeing as I do that once a month. And just now I filled the pot up as well with calcium, magnesium and seaweed to let my lecker fall in around the roots very, very gently. So I've already covered up that root tip and this one, of course, you know, there's always one, is going to stay rogue. But maybe I can cover it up or surround it at least with Lekka, just to keep it happy. Aska Centrum, sorry, Vandas. <laughs> but that's the problem. When I say Vandas, it doesn't include all the Vandas. But specifically, the Aska Centrum Vandacious orchids are such reluctant root growers. It's having a double whammy issue when you put a Phalaenopsis and a Vanda Miniata into a parent. It just becomes one of those orchids that you have to absolutely adore and dedicate your life to, because at the end of the day, vigor is not what speaks for this orchid. The blooms, to my understanding, aren't even fragrant. I do not understand this cross. I'm not trying to diss it. I'm always of the opinion an orchid is an orchid and it comes into your life for a reason. I still have not figured that reason out because I haven't seen the blooms yet. I haven't had the opportunity to be amazed, wowed, and then apologize to my orchid for <clears throat> putting up with her as opposed to loving her to bits. <laughs> so if you're considering potting up your Vandeopsis, Irene Dobkin, into Lekka and self-watering, let me say two things. If you have very, very high humidity, you're going to get away with being able to use large pieces of Lekka. If you have very low humidity, as is in my case, and you pot your orchid up in large Lekka, then make sure that the surface has some kind of a humidity buffer so that the roots do not stop growing. If you plan to try your Vandeopsis in a Lekka and self-watering setup, Wait for the roots to grow, of course, but make sure that your lecker is small, very water retentive, so that the roots do not have to fight their way into the media, seeing as, again, she doesn't grow roots very, very happily or readily, at least not in this seedling size. After three years, mine is still a seedling. We haven't even progressed to being a juvenile just yet, but huh, we'll keep on growing. So I'm just going to cut the stake down to a little bit of the size, otherwise that looks really silly. If she doubles in size, I still have a bit of stake left to keep tying her off. And uh, we'll probably see this orchid, if we don't have a follow-up on a care collab in the future, we will see this orchid in five years. <laughs> a lot can happen between now and five years. Oh, one more thing. My apologies, distracted. Because of the fact that she has this growth habit with a very, very tight base and stem. And because I also have had scale problems on other Phalaenopsis orchids, not this one. This one was only affected by thrips, but I am painting the base now with garlic alcohol to make sure that she is protected because she needs all the help and protection that she can get and a scale attack would send her back into, I don't know, year 1920, as in she would get set back very badly and worst case scenario, I would not be able to rescue her, save her at all. The whole thing with this orchid, slow grower, not a happy root grower, 
it works against any rescue mission. So garlic alcohol, pest protection and label. Now we are done, at least I hope so. If I didn't circle back on a thought, please use the comments. I'll be very happy to address them. I hope you found this video somewhat interesting. I could define this video as an informative moan. <laughs> I'm sorry. But anyway, I still hope that you found it interesting. Thank you so very, very much for watching. I hope you have yourself a wonderful day on one condition though, that you stay safe, please, and take care. Bye.